Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious, eternal God, compassionate God. Lord, at this time we come to your presence with gratitude and thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together into this holy sanctuary to glorify your name. Lord, as we are going to meditate upon thy word, speak to us, Lord. Fill all our hearts with your Holy Spirit and also with your precious word. We commit all our actions, thoughts, emotions and feelings into your precious hands. Be with us, Lord. Help us to live according to your word. We ask all these things in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God has given us this wonderful time for all of us to come here as a witnessing community and to meditate upon the Word of God. We need to thank God for God's guidance and protection in all our lives. God is giving us good health and wisdom amidst many problems and many dangers. So we always need to come to God's presence with gratitude and thanksgiving. And God has given us this wonderful time for all of us to come here on this Sunday morning and to meditate upon the word of God. Also, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the chairman and presbyter in charge of this CSI Wesley Egmo Church. Reverend M. Benjamin Inbarajaya. Aya has invited me long back to come to this church and share the word of God with all of you. So today God has given me this wonderful opportunity to come here and to share the word of God. So I would like to thank the presbyter in charge. Also I would like to thank Amagaru, uh, Mrs. Julia Chamma, and also uh, Juben and all the uh, members and also I would like to thank Mr. C. Bernard, Honorary Secretary of this church and Mr. G. Joshua Arul Ebenezer, Honorary Treasurer and all the PC members and all the congregational members for your presence and participation. Coming to this church makes me very happy because many a times I used to travel through this road, I used to see this church but uh, today God has given me this wonderful time to come to this very historical and vibrant church, CSI Egmore Wesley Church, and to share the word of God with all of you. Today, as per the CSI Almanac, we are going to meditate upon the important sacrament called Holy Baptism, dying and rising up with Christ. Holy Baptism, dying and rising up with Christ. Church of South India takes initiative to bring out all the aspects related to the doctrines, all the aspects related to the faith aspects, sacraments, and many other things during this one year uh, time, all the devotions. As a part of this sacramental understanding, Today we are going to meditate upon Holy Baptism. This term we would have been hearing since from our childhood days and we come and we observe baptism in many forms like you know, infant baptism, adult baptism and many other things and immersion and also sprinkling baptism. So like that we, will be, we would have been hearing this term since from our childhood days, even since from the Sunday school time. But today, let us focus more in-depthly upon this aspect of baptism and how this baptism is relevant in all our lives and how this baptism shapes our spiritual journey and how this baptism brings a relationship between our God and also our neighbors. So these are all the aspects we are going to meditate upon. 
The term baptism comes from the Greek terms, probably two important terms many of the church historians take into consideration. The first one is baptisma, which means washing or immersion or dipping. And the second one is baptismos, that means the ceremonial cleansing or ceremonial washing. These two terms have been used in many Greek uh, books and also it has been used in the New Testament uh, literature also. Probably we can see in Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 onwards when Lord Jesus Christ took baptism and came out of the river of Jordan and the Spirit of the God descended on Lord Jesus Christ as a whole, uh, in the form of dove and there was a lightning on him. So during this process, this term baptismos and baptisma has been mentioned in the Greek leptugent. But for our deeper understanding, I want to give you more practical details about this term baptism. In olden days, uh, probably in Jesus' time, we can say 2,000 years and much more older than Jesus' time also. This term was a general term. It was not the term which was related to the church circles. Now we see this term in only churches. We cannot see this baptism term in the outside world. Only Christians are using this term. But in olden days, this term baptism or baptismos or uh, baptisma has been used widely in the general society. This was used mainly by the fabric industry where in which baptisma means it's like a kind of immersion or dipping. That's why when we go out, we used to have the immersion baptism. But nowadays we are following this sprinkling baptism also. That means dipping into the water. That is the main essence of the term baptism. So in olden days, this fabric industry owners used to take one cloth which is having one color and they used to dip in a color dye so that the cloth will leave its color, that color which it has, and it gets new color. So if we take a red color and if you would dip a white cloth in that red color dye, in that red color liquid, so that white cloth will lose its white color and it turns into a red color. So in that process, they used to call baptismos. So there was a baptism for that cloth. So that was a general understanding of the Greco-Roman society about this term baptism. That is why we see when we get baptized, when we come into the Christ, when we dip ourselves in the, in the Lord, in the Savior, Jesus Christ, we need to leave out all our old sins, all our temptations, all this worldly behavior, and we should come up, we should rise up like a newborn believer. We should have a new life the life which Christ taught us, so we need to get that life. That is why this term, baptism, is used widely in all our circles. Baptism is a sacrament, and we all know that there are seven sacraments, but all the Protestant denominations, including CSI, take only two sacraments are very important but other Roman Catholic churches, they take seven sacraments as important aspects. But here in our church, two sacraments are very important. That means one is holy baptism and one is holy communion. Probably in the days to come, in some other weeks also, we might uh, meditate upon this holy communion also. But now, this holy baptism is a sacrament. What is a sacrament? First of all, we need to understand. Sacrament comes from the Latin term sacramentum, which means it's a holy or sacred. Church historian Augustine of Hippo emphasizes on this term sacrament. Sacrament is an 
outward sign of an inward grace that has been instituted by Lord Jesus Christ. That means it's an outward sign. We come and we get baptism. That might be an outward sign. But when we enter into the process of baptism, we get inward grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is what the main understanding of the term um, sacrament. So sacraments are basically the medium of grace. When we engage in the sacraments of holy baptism, we are getting Lord Jesus Christ's grace upon all our lives. Through this grace, we can achieve many things, but basically four things we can try to get. The first one is forgiveness. The second one is acceptance. The third one is freedom. And the fourth one is completeness or wholeness. So we will be forgiven of our sins and we will be accepted in the body of Lord Jesus Christ and we will get freedom, liberation from all the dangers and from all the illness. As a result of that, we will become a complete person the person who is having this wholeness, that's what we can understand from the baptism. So there are many decisions and also promises we need to understand when we take up this sacrament of holy baptism. Because of lack of time, I just wanted to give you just a brief headlines of these decisions and promises. The first decision is we need to believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the second decision is, we need to come to Lord's presence with repentance and confession. The third one is, we should bear witnesses, witness. And the fourth one is, we need to have commitment and we need to engage in fellowship with all the people who are around us. And when we look into the promises of baptism, we need to worship and serve God. We need to have faithful and prayerful life. And we need to resist the temptations which are around us. And we need to love others. Especially we need to seek justice and peace. <coughs> these, are the belief, these are the decisions <coughs> and promises uh, we need to understand. So in order to give more deeper understanding about this baptism and how this baptism liberates us from all these worldly dangers and how this baptism brings transformation, I wanted to give you one small example. When we come and when we take up the baptism, sacrament of baptism, towards the end and the pastor will bless the water and after all the uh, scripture reading and all the things after everything and then pastor will put a sign of cross on the forehead by taking the water so why we do this sign of cross that is called baptismal sign of cross and this baptismal sign of cross is a symbol of transformation that means you are getting a new life the life which you had the the life the illness which you had the dangers which you had the worldly life which you had you are getting a transformation from all those things you might be rejected you might be pushed out you might be marginalized but when you come and take baptism you will be accepted into the Christ body if we take the symbol of cross we see on all the churches the symbol of cross and many a times we put in our chains and we put in our houses and we find comfort and solace when we see the cross. But we need to understand that <coughs> when we see the cross, we will not only just see the image of cross, but we see Lord Jesus Christ sacrifice on the cross. If we deeply understand the cross 2000 years ago, this cross was rejected and humiliated and this cross was the symbol of capital punishment. And no one wants this cross in their homes. Why? Because people used to die on the cross. People used to get scared when they see the cross. 
for example when any dead body or any corpse is there in our homes what we do we bring coffin box and after everything we go to the funeral and we dispose that coffin box and we will have cremation we will have burial or whatever it might be so maybe one or two days or three days we will have that coffin box we don't keep coffin box throughout 365 days in our homes why because when we see the coffin box we see it's a symbol of death it's a symbol of horror it's a symbol of danger we don't get proper sleep when that coffin box is there throughout our 365 days likewise 2000 years ago when they see the symbol of cross people used to get scared because that was a symbol of death but when lord jesus christ sacrificed his life shed his his blood on the cross that symbol of horror became the symbol of honor the symbol of pain and punishment became the symbol of solace and comfort now we find comfort why because that symbol of cross gave transformation likewise when you come to the baptism when you get sign the cross sign on our foreheads our lives will be transformed we might be rejected we might have many problems but we get transformation in our lives now i want to give you two important key points for us to understand baptism is an act of obedience and witness to god's miracles in genesis chapter 7 verses 11 to 24 we see noah and his family their trust and their obedience because of their purity because of their integrity because they were loving others they were forgiving others they could able to experience this god's miracles so baptism is an act of obedience we need to come to god's presence with obedience and we need to witness god's miracles in our lives right from our childhood till our death every day every moment we need to experience god's miracles this life is a great miracle which is which comes from our lord and savior jesus christ noah had that trust noah had that obedience in the lord when lord said noah to make an ark so that everyone can live people used to laugh at him see that time there was no flood there was no water we could able to see ships and boats in the harbor in the port area in the sea if we build a one ship in front of our church all people laugh at us why because there is no need of a ship on the land so we cannot use that ship likewise even noah also would have been faced lot of humiliation during that time there was no flood there was no water before why this person is building an ark building a big ship and he, is he gone out of his mind like that he would have faced lot of humiliations but still noah's trust and obedience made him to witness god's miracles in our own lives also people might discourage us to follow god's ways but when we have obedience and when we have that trust definitely we can witness god's miracles and in exodus chapter 14 verses 21 and 22 even all the people of israelites also witnessed this great miracle because they crossed this red sea here God has given baptism to Noah and his family, transformation to them in that water. Likewise, crossing the Red Sea, God has given them all the people of Israel's baptism by crossing the Red Sea and by being able to witness entering into the promised land. They were very powerless, they were very weak, they were very marginalized. And that baptism, in baptism, we need to affirm our faith that we are leaving out 20 to 26. Here, Jesus is predicting his death. Some Greeks are coming to Lord Jesus Christ, and they are asking Lord Jesus Christ many questions. During that time, Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 24, he is saying that, grain of wheat falls into the earth and, does it, and dies. It remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. 
that means if a grain if it is kept like that in our houses or in our shelves or wherever it might be it remains as one grain but when we put it in the ground so when it dies when that grain got broken and the new life sprouts from that grain and it gives birth to many lives so likewise <coughs> we need to take up this aspect of dying and rising in christ dying in this materialistic world dying in this sinful world leaving out all the temptations all the kind of ego pride anger jealousy and many things we are caught up with so we need to die in all those things and we need to rise up in christ then only we can have this born again experience in Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 4 here uh, Paul is saying to all the people in Rome so because that time Rome was completely dominated by the Greeks and that was a Roman culture was there so Paul was addressing very clearly that baptism into Christ or baptized into Christ death Christ raised from death we too walk into the new life so that belief we should need to have when you take up this sacrament of holy baptism holy baptism is not just a ritual it's not just a thing that when people are around us it's we come here and we take holy baptism and we host a big party after baptism no that all need to be there but on top of that these essential integral aspects which leads us to the spiritual life need to be there then definitely we will get connected with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we will be in his kingdom and we will be called as Lord Jesus Christ children. Let us look to God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Lord, Almighty King, we thank you for this word. Lord, help us to take up this sacrament of holy baptism seriously and help us to take up the cross dying and rising up with Christ is the essential aspects in all our lives. Help us to get transformed person. Once again, we commit all our lives into your precious hands. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.